All right, we've got the Lions head coach, Dan Campbell, joining us this morning. And Coach, how you feeling day before the draft? Good morning. Hey, good morning. How's it going, guys? Um, it, yeah, I feel, obviously feel pretty good. I mean, it's this is always a fun time of the year, um, you know, for, for everybody here. Uh, you know, Brad and myself, I mean, it's, it's exciting because you get a chance to, you know, to continue to add to your team. Um, and find the right guys that fit you. So this is this is exciting. What's tomorrow look like for you? How much of the hay is in the barn? The evaluation process, you've had a ton of time to be able to evaluate. Brad Staff has had a time to evaluate. Is tomorrow fielding phone calls? And I mean, what's it look like for you? Yeah, I, look, I think, um, yeah, I, really most of the hay is in the barn. I, I would say it's, you know, uh, most of the leg work's done now. Brad, Brad, you know, continues to um, to reach out and and you know have open communication with with different teams at times. Teams call him. That's just the nature of every draft, you know. And it always is about flexibility, um, the ability to move if needed. That those things are just kind of the nature of the business, no matter where you're at. So. Um, look, for me, it's much easier. And, yes, most of the hay's in the barn. For Brad, it never ends, all right? So, I mean, he, he is uh, he's nonstop. And, uh, you know, he's this guy is unbelievable. He's a machine. He's a machine. So uh, we're going to be ready, though. How involved are you in the process? Like Brad talked about being lone wolves on guys. Do you, do you stump for guys? What's that process like when you see a guy knowing, hey, you trust Brad, but you want to make your opinion known? Well, I think – the, the one of the most important things that we've done um, is, you know, Brad and I try to stay out of it, and as as much as we can, uh, while while everybody else gives their opinion and does their evaluations, uh, you know, from you know we listen to Ray Agnew and John Dorsey and and uh, Mike and Hud and and uh, Don, all those guys, and then the area scouts, the coaches. And Brad and I take all of that in, and as much as we can, uh, you know, we, we listen and, and we absorb that information, and we've got our own thoughts on those players. And so um, once we've gathered that information, then, then we'll, we'll give our opinion. And certainly Brad and I meet together by ourselves, and we go over those evaluations a little bit, right? You know, mm-hmm. man, I, I didn't see it that way. Did you see this? Did you see – and so – uh, ultimately, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to what Brad and I really believe and what we see eye to eye on. And uh, and so, you know, we, we, we do a good job of, of gathering all that. And and then and then we come to the best conclusion for for what we think is going to fit us and what we need. And uh, and I would say, you know, here we go. We're going on four years, but there's really there's really not anything Brad and I haven't agreed on. I mean, there's these little small things, or maybe there's a player here or there, but I'm, I'm telling you, it's we see pretty eye to eye on things. Um, and so it, it's been another good year, another good process. So last year, obviously, going into draft day, you guys had the number six overall pick, ultimately ended up trading back. A little bit different this year due to the success that you guys had, picking later in the draft, and it's, it's unique for fans. We haven't waited this long for a draft pick. How deep do you see this draft in terms of quality football players that are available, not just at 29, but 61 and, and, and on down the road? How deep is this draft in actual good football players? Uh, I mean, that's a good question. It's, um, man, I, I, you know, depth, it's, it's hard to say depth. Um, you know, look, I, I – there, there's good players all through this draft like any. It's just a matter of where they're at, how long is it going to take for them to develop uh, some of those. But, look, I know that, you if, you know, you get one of these players in, in the top top 15, uh, you know, you're going to get a heck of a player. And and then after that, there there's a good little run there of, you know, potential starters, uh, guys you think can come in and compete to start, things of that nature, or grow into it. Um, so, you know, there's a couple of couple of areas that are that are you know heavier than others, but we also know those will go pretty fast. I mean, this is a this is a this is an offensive draft. I mean, there, there's more offensive players than defensive players uh, 
overall uh, at the top of this. So, you know, it's, um, it, it's just, it's interesting every year. You go through this process, you find these guys you really like, man, they fit you. And, and then we're going to be sitting there, and you're just going to watch them fly right off the board. <laughs> yeah. and, and when it's all said and done, you look, and all the legwork you did, and you realize it's like, man, you, all these guys you thought you really liked, they're, they're not as many as you thought after you know the other 31 teams pick um, through every draft. So that's the nature of it. And um, and all we got to do is find the guys that, that we like when it comes time for us to pick. Speaking of the guys you like, the trade-off between you know talent versus character. You've talked about you know some guys just won't fit with what you guys are doing. What what's that process like where you go, hey, I like this guy, but he's got to make sense for our locker room. Yeah, look, I, honestly, I think it's easier than than people make it out to be. I, I don't think it's as um, you know it, it's um, you know for us it, it's what. The area scouts do so much work on these guys. Um, they're the ones who really put their stamp on them, whether they do or don't, you know, yes or no. And because honestly, if an area scout says no, man, he's done. I mean, that, that's how much we trust our area scouts. But if an area scout is willing to say, hey, man, I'll, I'll, put, my, I'll put my stamp on this guy, and it gets through there, then, it, then it's about, you know, um, do we really feel like this guy will come in and, and he's going to mold the team? He's going to be um, he's going to be about what we're about, or is he going to be? You know, I mean, look, he, the the non negotiables are things you would probably think of, right? If a guy can't keep his weight in, in check, um, he's going to struggle there. He's a guy who's constantly late for meetings. Uh, he's a guy who doesn't work hard in practice. You know, he it, it's 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 really. I think most teams would say, yeah, that that guy's not real appealing to us. So, um, I don't think it's as as glaring as you think it is. Um, but certainly, that's part of it for us. And uh, you know, we go through a checklist, and at some point, a lot of these guys, not a lot, but some of them don't even get to get beyond that because their their character says they won't. How much does it factor in what you saw, not to say what you saw them do in college, but what level of talent they were playing? Because there's some really good athletes some some good prospects in this draft from smaller schools. How much does that vary or, or play a part in whether you're looking at them as a first round possible or even later in the draft because of the quality of competition they played against in college? Yeah, I mean that that's part of it. That that is a that's a significant part of it. I mean, I you know, there's there's a couple of guys I can think of right now off the top of my head that are that way. I'm not going to name who they are, but Oh, come on. But um <laughs> but yes, they you know, you that's part of the evaluation process. And so then with that, you have to project, right? It's like there's a level of projection. Well, okay, I see this. I see the talent. Uh I see the ability. I see the character, all right, but what does that look like when he comes to the NFL, you know, and how does he handle that? Uh, how does he uh, respond to that? Um, and, and so you, you do. You, you have to have a level of projection and what you really believe the player can do. And it's really not so much about when you see those players' projection, it's about – it's not obviously about right now. It's about next year. A year from now, what does he look like? And, and okay, if we believe that, then what is the appetite? What, what do, where do we really believe he's he's worth getting at, you know? Um, and so that's kind of where we've we've put those players, John. You know, it, it's our level of conviction. Certainly, if it goes up, then man, they they get pushed up. If not, then then maybe they'll they're a little lower. You know, our appetite's a little lower than maybe some other teams are. We're talking to Lions head coach Dan Campbell. The black uniforms are back. We know you were pushing for them. You 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 wore them as a player here. Why did you want to bring these back? I just, I man, I, I always, I, I was a fan of the black, and um, even before I got here, when they wore them, I remember, you know, watching them play in the black uh, when I was on, you know, hell, when I was with Dallas, I man, I loved that. And then when I got to come here, and and I just remember the players, we we really liked it, man. It was a good change up. Um, you know, I, I don't know any NFL players that don't like black. I mean, I'm, there's some out there, believe me. But it's just uh, there's something about it. And uh, and I think it's a pretty cool look. I think it's, uh, 
you know, it, there's an aura about it, and um, and to be able to bring it back, you know, especially with where we're at and uh, where we feel like we're going, I, I think it was it, it was good for us. And and look, man, I'm appreciative to to Sheila and Ride because look, that wasn't that wasn't the easiest thing, you know. Um, I, I know what all that is, but uh, they're willing to make it work, and that just shows they're willing to do, you know, what the players want too, man. They they listen to the players because the players are all about. Um, you know, having some of this swag and stuff and, uh, you know, a certain look. And it's it's not all about the look, but it helps, you know. How big is it to have the draft here in our hometown? And and you've seen everything going on downtown. There's, there's projections that there could be 300,000, close to 400,000 people over three days that come to Detroit to view this. How big is this moment for the city? Yeah, I think this is this is huge. You know, this is uh, any chance uh, that that you get to to host uh, something this big. I think is is big for any city, and particularly Detroit. You know, this is you know I think this is one of those things that that uh, has not happened a lot. It, it rarely comes, if any. And I'm not talking about the draft. Just these some of these big events, man. It's great for the economy. The economy. It's great for. For, for everybody involved. And so, um, you know, I, I would say, man, we, we've earned this, you know. The city of Detroit's earned this. And, uh, and I think we should enjoy this, man. Make the most of it and have a good time. And, and just don't forget, we are the host city. So, um, you know, it should be about what we're about. And, and, um, and I am. I'm excited for the city. You guys have been very active with trades on draft days, and everybody is excited with the thought that you might trade up and and what that might look like, going up and grabbing a player that everybody's excited about. It might be a little less sexy to move back in the draft, especially since it is here hosted, and, and Brad addressed this situation, but your thoughts on possibly not having a pick in the first round, the disappointment that some fans may feel. How does, has that factored into your thought process at all about possibly dra- trading out of the first round? Yeah. Well, here's what I'd say is, well, then all you got to do, it's one sleep and then you get two picks. <laughs> well said. I agree. That's what I would have told the kids when they were young. You got one sleep. <laughs> Christmas comes tomorrow. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, so look, anything can happen. We're prepared to do whatever we need to do. And look, if our guy's not there, we're sitting there, and our guy's not there, we will move back. So I'm just preparing the fans. Be ready. You never know what's going to happen here. Dan, want to end on this. Uh, Jared Goff spoke about you in the game of golf. He said it, he thinks you'd be bored by it. No running, no hitting. Is he right? What will you oh. do with some downtime once this uh, whole process is over? Listen, as long as there's beer, I would never get be- bored with, with golf. <laughs> can always, you can always make it your own game. <laughs> I agree. It's Lions head coach Dan Campbell. We appreciate Thanks, Dan. some of your time. Thank you. All right. Have a good one.